Welcome to the midweek devotion of the Littleton Methodist Church. Here in West Central Illinois, fall colors are at their prime right now. So let's begin this devotion with a short ride through the country, just marveling at the fall leaves. Good day, everyone. I'm glad you could be here to join us today for our, our regular midweek inspirational thought to kind of something just to kind of chew on and to challenge our, our minds on a little bit and to challenge our hearts and our souls. And today we're going to talk about Thomist inspired epistemology. I say Thomist because it is uh, an idea inspired or brought to my thinking by St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, a medieval church, probably greatest theologian of the, of the last thousand years of Christianity, at least some say so, and a great philosopher. I say inspired because uh, that, that's kind of my little escape. I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to imitate Thomas Aquinas because he's so far over my head that I just say he influenced me in saying this and if you think it influenced me good that's great if not well you know I didn't promise very much. Epistemology just simply means theories of knowledge. So I'm saying that Thomas Aquinas wrote about how we know things in a way that kind of influenced the thoughts I'm sharing today. Now the thoughts on these midweek are there for the purpose of making us think and chew and wrestle and, and respond back and forth and talk to others. So this week I have a, uh, maybe a little requirement of you. Go find some friend and try this. Look at them very closely and say, hey Bert, uh, hey Ernie, i got a question for you. And when they come over and say, yeah, what, what's up? Uh, and say. I've been thinking about Thomas inspired um, epistemology. I want to know what you think. I want to start first with the, um, the things that we can see and touch and feel. The stars, the, the things we can measure. This is uh, the realm of science. That is, it can be measured, it can be examined, it can be tested, we can see, we can feel it. It's the natural world and the nat natural sciences are a window of knowledge to that world. But science only goes so far. And what happens if there's something that's outside of science? How about ethics? Science, we say, is descriptive. That is, it describes something, but it's not prescriptive. That is, it does not pre prescribe something, like maybe a doctor prescribes medicine or something to you. Science can tell us how to make missiles. It can't tell us 
whether to aim them in exploring space or to blow up each other. Is there something real about evil? Is there something real about goodness? Is there some, uh, something real about love? Are all these things, do we have a reason for being here? Are we just um, an accidental collection of DNA that came together and will be here a short while? Will our planet come and our planet go with uh, no difference, no importance, nothing is of, uh, of value? When we get to this area and these kinds of questions, we get to the realm of philosophy. That is, uh, we get to the realm where the toolbox is no longer microscopes and telescopes, but the toolbox that we use is reason and logic and dialectic, arguing back and forth, discussing things, uh, expanding our, our area into areas that may be uncomfortable for scientists because they're a little more nebulous. Since the beginning of human history, in just about every place there have been humans, there have been questions about reality and are there things that are bigger than what we see, touch, feel, bigger than what we kind of imagine as to what makes something good or what makes something uh, bad or beneficial or, or what is uh, love? But that there is perhaps a reality out there that is bigger than all of that that we call God. And by very nature, God can't be tested and tried and put in a telescope or he wouldn't be God. And at the same time, everyone in all places has sort of felt, or every society in all places has sort of felt this, this need to understand about something beyond us. Thomas would call this the, um, the realm of theology, a study of God. And the toolbox often is something that would make the scientists very uncomfortable, but the toolbox would be inspiration, experience, tradition, an exploration that is open to uh, evidence of of a personal inspiration, revelation. Here's where it gets pretty uncomfortable. Science has never totally answered the questions it set out to answer and probably never will. And science often makes theories that don't pan out as we're finding with the Webb telescope right now. Uh, that doesn't stop us from exploring the boundaries and coming closer and closer to the truth. And uh, it doesn't demean science, it's just the way it is. And philosophy has never answered all of the questions that it sets out for. Political philosophy. Our world is still a mess and different political philosophies are vying for supremacy back and forth and we see it all over the globe and, and philosophy just hasn't quite done that yet. Oh, and theology. As we study the inspiration in our faith language and we've never been able to really explain God in a way that everybody agrees or that we have God nailed down in a box. I actually, we can't because, you know, the bo God is bigger than our box, just like the universe is bigger than our box. And so we continue to explore these. Now, what makes these uncomfortable is, obviously, the scientist is uncomfortable with faith language. That just does not fit the realm of science. And the theologian is uncomfortable with the idea that there is nothing more that's out there. And that experiences are just some sort of chemical happening that happens inside of us. And the philosopher probably is never really quite comfortable with anything. Philosophy by its nature is never really quite comfortable with things. There was a time in our history when a Renaissance person 
was considered a, a fairly enlightened or a studied, well-studied person. That is a person that appreciates science and philosophy and theology and, and doesn't really shut the doors down or the windows of knowledge down from any of those or is comfortable with some of the paradoxes that we get ourselves into as we're studying with the limited amount of knowledge that we have. Now, I, I'm not sure there are very many Renaissance people still around in our world. There's just so much to study and you can dig so deeply into your own little box that we usually don't jump the fence into other disciplines. And, and maybe once in a while, very suspiciously, theology will jump a little into philosophy or science will jump into a little philosophy, but they always try to keep themselves grounded back where we are. And the, and the question I have is, let's say that we are living in a house with these different windows of knowledge and we decide that we feel pretty comfortable with one window of knowledge. And so we run over and we shut down and pull the drapes to the other windows. If we are uh, deep into our particular faith and our experience of faith, and we are uncomfortable, even with others that are slightly different, but held the same faith, then we certainly feel uncomfortable with the science and the philosophers, and we want to shut those windows and live in our side of the room. And if we are, are scientists, perhaps, not all, but maybe we are a scientist that the whole tightly to the natural world and thinks we can get the answers to the questions if only we had enough data and we go and we shut the uh, doors and the windows and then pull the drapes in those windows of knowledge that are not easy to collect empirical data on. My question is, are we becoming more enlightened? Or as we shut down the other windows and pull the drapes, are we closing off windows of knowledge? and becoming deeper in our subject, but uh, lesser able to grasp the totality of the human existence. Thomas Aquinas believed that all sincere, honest searches for truth in the physical world, the spiritual world, in philosophy, that all of those are valid ways to know. Now, all of those have their weaknesses, all of those have their pitfalls and, the, and their dangers, and all of those are limited in how much they can teach us, but they all help us to learn, they all help us to grow, and that there really is not as much separation between faith and reason and science as sometimes we think there is. Well, we're, we're halfway through another week. In a few days, we'll get to come together and, and worship our Lord again. And in the meantime, may God go with you and be with you this week. And, and this week, I think I'll, I'll make kind of a, a dangerous request of God. But may God stretch the corners of your box just a little bit this week in some way or the other so that you have a fresh realization that he is bigger than your box and always has been and always will be. God bless you. <laughs>